Hello there everyone and welcome to this YouTube channel. My name is Stebuho from SCAnatomy.com, but you can call me Savvy. In this video, we're going to start off a little differently from the first mountain lion video that we worked on, where I started everything from scratch and then I started sculpting later. For this one, we're going to be updating an already existing mountain lion sculpt. We're going to start from a low resolution and then work our way up to a higher resolution. Now, you don't have to start off from a base mesh like I did here. You can also choose to use these spheres from the ZBrush library. Uh, but I chose to use a base mesh that I already created before and the sculpt already had enough details, so it helps a lot. For reference, I used a software that I always use while sculpting, which is called PureRef, which is the software that you see at the bottom left corner there. Uh, you can load all your images in there and set it to always on top mode so you don't have to always uh, alt tab to view your reference images or use a second screen so you can just have it all in one screen i also loaded an already detailed line sculpt from sa anatomy and set the view to split screen and now if you don't know how to enable split screen all you have to do is make your way to the top here and click on transform and at the bottom of this window where it says split screen set that value to one and your split screen should now be enabled. Also remember to make sure that solo mode is disabled, otherwise split screen will not function. So what I'm doing now is drawing muscle groups using the damn standard brush. This allows my lines to carve dips into the model itself. I tend to do to make it seem like it's overlapping, uh, to make one muscle seem like it's overlapping another, I come here with a clay buildup, just get a large enough size. Then I fill in the medius chunks. So let's say there's two muscles right over here. Uh, so I come in and the part that should be overlapping, I just use the clay builder brush. Just draw over and then smooth it a little bit. And with the damn standard selected, I come right to where they overlap, where one of them overlaps. And I draw over that right under here. And with the clay build up again, I just define that detail. And go back to the dam standard and right at the edge, I target the edge of the overlapping one. And I just smooth it a little bit and I just draw over that edge and it should look like it's overlapping. What I try to remember while sculpting this part is the biceps for Morris has a thin layer uh, attached to it that wraps itself around the top of the extensions on the side here. I highlighted it in green. Uh, another important thing to remember is that it does not wrap itself around the entire leg. It starts uh, off right at the bottom of the biceps for Morris and it ends very close to where it started. So right here, I'm doing the same thing that I did with the deltoids, the triceps, the extensors of the arm and the latissimus dorsi, just coming in with a dam standard and a clay builder brush and just uh, carving out the small minor details and the small shapes that, that we're going to come back and refine later on. By the way, something interesting that you might want to remember, feline paws are basically human hands just bent differently at certain points. Uh, once you see them side to side, it's really hard to unsee it. You start to see the similarities very quickly. So basically you can find all the bones of a human hand in the paw, in the front paw of a feline just in different shapes and sizes. So now we're finally getting closer to being able to refine this sculpt and put in a lot more detail and go higher up in resolution. And also again with the clay brush, I'm just coming in and carving out those details again in the trapezius and the latissimus dorsi. Also the external abdominal obliques, just refining some details here and there.
Remember what we talked about. Human hands and feline paws are quite similar. So always try to keep that in mind when you're sculpting feline paws. You don't always have to use it as a reference, but it helps to have it as a guide just so that you don't make major mistakes. So now we're just fixing a few more things before we move on to the next part which is a small part of the face we're going to be working on the face a little bit and then moving on to refining and adding in more detail and all the little detail that we wanted to add before All right, now that we're finally getting to the finer details and refining things and going up in resolution, I do have to say at this point, the damn standard brush has to be your favorite brush because we've been using it for a lot of things this entire time and we're going to be using it a lot more when we're refining because there are really small lines in the muscles that we have to get and we are going to use the dam standard a lot and also toggling between the clay buildup uh, as well. Something that you should remember is that we're not going to be sculpting these lines or drawing these lines in random directions. They're, they have a certain direction that you had that they have to follow, such as the latissimus dorsi. The lines should be going upwards. So from the bottom of the belly, uh, going upwards to its back so that's how we're going to flow that's how the lines are going to flow and now all that's left for us to do is just refine things and that should be it there aren't any major details or any ground breaking um, shapes that we're going to add in so right now it's just going to be refining things with the uh, dam standard brush and the clay build brush, clay builder brush, and just refining everything that we created so far. Remember that you don't always have to stick to the highest resolution, especially when you're dealing with details that will change the overall shape of the mesh. You would much rather do that in the lowest resolution. Remember, lowest resolution is for big changes and the finer details you do those in the highest resolution because your low poly count cannot take those high details that you want to put into the mesh Another great thing is, say for example, you have something that's this dense, you have something that's this detailed, like these beautiful lips that you see here, and you wanted to keep all the details that are here, such as the scar and the lip details and whatnot, it would be, right now it would be really easy because this is just a sphere with lips on it, but normally when you have like a full character that's really dense, it becomes really difficult and tricky to move things around 
So what you would do is you would come all the way to your lowest resolution, your lowest value on your subdivision modifier, and then you start moving things around however you like. And the modifier will try its best to update that and keep the details like uh, they were before. So all you do is just toggle between your lowest resolution and you just go all the way back to your highest. So like I said before, your lowest resolution is just for working on major things like major changes in the mesh, things that will change the overall shape and whatnot. And your highest resolution is just for those, just for those fine details that uh, would be really hard to get in your lowest resolution. So now let's just dive deep into the refining and let's see how it looks in the end. This is what we ended up with. I'm really happy with the way it looks. And I hope that you found this uh, information helpful. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. And we will see you in the next one.